Breaking Into is celebrating its one year anniversary in two months. So to lead our way that direction, we're going to take a look back at some things that happened on previous episodes next. You are tuned in to Black Hollywood Live, Breaking Into. Uh, I love this song. It's a good one. It has a good message. It's a good song with a good message and a good beat to it, of course. Oh, I love it. Welcome to another edition of Breaking Into. It's episode 43, but it's a special episode because we are celebrating Breaking Into's one year anniversary with me as host. Time goes by so fast, I can't even believe it. I love doing the show so much. So I decided that um, this today and October 4th, I'll be doing what I call my greatest hits volumes one and two. So I will go through and show you some clips from some episodes we had on um, last year. And some moments that I really liked or enjoyed or just I remember. There's so many to choose from too. Trust me, there's so many to choose from. So today we got 11, 11 moments we're going to share. 11 is my number. I love 11. That's my number. I'm going to show that today. And then, then we do the same thing for October 4th, this edition of the show. And you're thinking, why episode 43? Why not? Like odd numbers. So we'll do episode 43. Um, the show, let me just give you a little brief, brief history of the show. So this show was already, uh, was being broadcast on Black Hollywood Live here uh, a few years ago. It was also part of Nick Cannon Productions. And then it went on hiatus. And then I came to Black Hollywood Live via After Buzz Media Networks, because I do shows on the other sister networks at Buzz, After Buzz TV, Popcorn Talk, and Book Circle Online. I talked to President Dario Christian, who um, is just a great guy, and I said, I want to do some work with you guys. And he said, I have a show for you that will match your talents and strengths. I'm a certified life coach, and I'm getting into the nitty gritty of like what's going on, and he gave me Breaking Into. Now, originally Breaking Into was a show about breaking into an industry, giving you tips and tricks, and just like breaking, you're breaking in. You want to know what's going on? These are the ways to do it. Well, I have completely kind of modified a little bit. So now we're breaking into the person. We're breaking into the people. So the guests that come on, we're breaking into their lives in their industries and kind of how they got in, what are they doing once they got in, what, what tips and tricks they have, of course, just their philosophies and just what makes them tick. And I've had a, a wider range of guests, um, some given to me and some that I've booked myself. And I just want to thank everybody out there. I want to thank every single guest who's been on my show and who continues to come on my shows that are coming up. It just makes this show so worthwhile to share with you um, their stories and what they're doing. Um, so that's, that's basically the brief history of this show. And so we're going to start with my first clip, just basically of my first episode back last November. Let's go ahead and show that clip. Hello and welcome to the premiere edition of the new incarnation what? of Breaking Into. Yes. I am your host, James Law Jr., and I'm a certified life coach. And one of the philosophies that I have is that we're supposed to share knowledge, lift each other up, and pay it forward. This show, I'm going to attempt to do that every single episode. So you're going to join me, right? Every episode here Thursdays at 5 p.m. here on Black Hollywood Live. My first guest. Let me, let me read what you think I'm busy out there. Let me just read about him. <laughs> He's an actor, <laughs> activist, beatboxer, educator, writer, and he had his own show this year, Tell Me I'm Pretty. I did. Joshua Silverstein. Hey, man. Welcome. This is great. I'm so glad I'm you're freaking here. out. <laughs> I'm freaking This is so cool. Have your water. I'm, have your I, water. I, oh. I have two of them. Yes. Because that's how big my ego is, <laughs> as you read. <laughs> So we all know. We're all on the same page. And that's how we started our first episode. Um, I have to um, give a little backstory. Joshua Silverstein was my Uber driver several years ago. <laughs> and we talked, we talked, uh, he was driving me, we talked about art. He said he had a show coming up about four or five months later. And I said, I'll go, I'll come. And I actually showed up. <laughs> and he was shocked. And it began, now I've known him for years now, we began a friendship. And so he did my first episode of a little web series that I was working on called The Really Quick James Lott Jr. Show. Um, that's not part of After Buzz, it's my own little thing I was doing. And when I decided to get this show, I was like, I know who I want my first guest to be, Mr. Joshua Silverstein. You need to check him out. He's so good. And because of that, here's something that I had him do, because usually when you have a talent, 
I try to have you do it on my show. So he does a little bit of what he does, and let's show that clip. Yeah, but you're a trained professional, and if you don't want to, you don't have to do it. Of course I will. Want me to beatbox for you? A little, a little piece, please. <laughs> and you can look at that camera, like right over there, and do a little piece for you. Here we go. Little, little beat dropping from, from Joshua Silverstein. Yeah. As my lips are dry. Hey, y'all, drink, mm. drink some water. I'm going to drink some water. Mm. There we go. Here we go. Uh, <clears throat> He's so talented. If you ever get a chance to see him, he's here in LA. If you get a chance to see him, you need to go run, not walk and see him. He's so good. He does a lot with beatboxing and rapping and talking and acting and all of his work. Uh, Tell Me I'm Pretty was a show that he also redid recently. And it's just, he's he's so good. He's so, so good. He's my friend. He's all my friend. And uh, and so I was happy to have him on my first show. It was like, I completely was very honored. Um, for him and all my other guests that I showcase on the show, you can go to our Breaking Into Facebook page for more information on them and where you can find them. So now we also just do, we don't just do things in, in just one industry. I talk to people from different industries. I talk to a dentist. I talk to a foodie. This one was something that was very, it was brought to my attention and it's a company called Wild Aid, and they fight for animal rights around the world. And I got to meet um, its director, Peter Knights. Great guy in person, just a wonderful human being. I could have talked to him for hours. He dropped some knowledge on me because I believe in thinking globally. Yes, we all have our different races and orientations and all that, but we all are human. And there's some things that trump everything else in, the, in, in life, which is our ecosystem. And he talks about this one thing that just stuck with me and made me want to go and do something now. Let's go ahead and hear that. Don't buy these products. You know, you might see some ivory. It might look quite it looks cool. so pretty. And... But there's a story behind that yeah. ivory. And the sad story is right now, for example, 33,000 elephants a year are being killed for ivory. That's 96 a day. Oh my um, God. And as well as hurting the animals, it has a human impact too because, you know, an elephant in Africa is worth about a million dollars to 1.6 million in tourism revenue to that mm. country. And so it's supporting local communities, supporting education, right, all this right. outreach. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the poachers are stealing it. And all for some ivory trinkets. So, you know, we really want to just raise awareness with people that when you look at these products, be aware where it's coming from and the process that you're unleashing by buying them. And just, just don't buy them. Yeah, because I, be- I believe that, you know, we're all connected. And so even things you think, you know, and people you don't think you know, what you do does a, it's a ripple effect in it's the universe. A, it's a ripple effect. And there's the same with endangered animals. So people say, well, you know what, we're protecting a, a species now called the pangolin, which is a little anteater. Oh, and, and Most people don't even know. It's yeah, you know what it was. Super, like, okay. super cute. Okay. And they're being literally shipped in their <laughs> tons <laughs> to Asia, but really? they're, they're part oh, of the ecosystem. And if you remove them, it's like taking a brick out the wall. Oh, yeah. And it starts to get wobbly and then it crumbles. And we've already seen this in, in ocean ecosystems where fisheries have collapsed. Oh, yeah. Because one fish has been overfished and you take it out the food chain, the whole thing reshuffles. And often that can be really bad. So it's, it's one about these beautiful and amazing animals. Right, there. of course. But it's also about the people who are, are making a sustainable living from right. it. Uh, right. And then it's also the impacts we're going to have on our entire environment. You yeah, guys, it, it was such like a movie. riveting interview. I was sitting there doing the interview and I was completely mesmerized and hearing all this stuff. And it's just, we got to think globally too. We have things at home and things going on here, of course, but the whole ecosystem really needs our help. And Wild Aid is the organization. They do great work. They have athletes who are spokespeople for them. And it just, it just, it was such an amazing, amazing conversation. And I try to do more of that here on this show. And the next clip show, I'm going to show some other stuff that's, you know, really good um, that are kind of outside of entertainment. Well, this next section I call my singer section. So um, I try to show diverse musical talent on this show because uh, we like all kinds of music. I like all kinds of music. And I want to, you know, showcase people um, who are doing great things. And I get to showcase a black male opera singer. How's that? Um, I didn't know there were very many of them or they existed. 
I knew about black female opera singers, but I just, my own ignorance, I didn't know. And I met him and I got to see him perform live. And he's amazing. And his name is H. Warren Sharp. And he clued us in on the whole experience. We get to learn about him. And of course I asked him to sing a little something for me and it made the whole studio kind of stop in their ear. So let's go ahead and hear that. Tell you that you can't do something. Yeah. So when someone tells you that you can't do something, that that is too much rent that they're having in your mm, and that's too much. Yeah. Just, yeah, just too much. And no one knows your ability but you and the God that lives with inside of you, what you can do. And you can do all things. You can do all things that you put your mind to. It. Um, I don't like when people say, oh, you're not able or you are not allowed or you can't do something because what they're doing is they're, they're throwing their own insecurities and their own deferred dreams onto you. Mm -hmm. And I don't have time for that. Why would you try that? It's just too hard. Ex ex like, exactly. Like, well, why would you not? Yeah. Because somebody you? does do it. Exactly. So, I, mean, I don't know if bad English, but no, someone does some do, do it. it. Somebody do, do, somebody do, do it. it. Exactly. That's, That's do better do English. Yeah. Somebody do do it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, but, but yes. someone to, to throw their own deferred plans and yeah. dreams onto you. Like, ugh, that's nasty. Yeah. Don't yeah. do that. I so. agree. Very yeah. good. I, I like to just do it. do it. Can you do a little something for us? What? I, um, <laughs> I'm all, I know, just a pride. I'm all, a little something. What? It's just like something, nothing, nothing too long, but a little something to give us a taste of your, you did a little bit earlier, a little tiny bit of your vocal talent. Okay. Just a little, a little just something. Just a little something. Oh, oh, oh. A little something, something. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, this is a wonderful song that I learned years ago. A wonderful spiritual. Okay, I like it. Over my head, I hear music in the air. Over my head, I hear music in the air. Over my head, music in the air there must be a god somewhere oh my god i mean come on the amazing amazing guy he's performing all over southern california h warring sharp is his name and he is just so good. Oh my God, he just has a great voice. It made everybody stop in the studio when he was when he was singing there. I was very happy to have him on my show and watch him continue to grow his, his repertoire. Um, this next one's kind of cute. I invited my former Dish and Days co-host, Mark J. Freeman, to actually co-host show with me. The one time I had a co-host. I usually do this show by myself. So I actually invited him on the show because he knew of the guest, Christy Ferris, who's best known for um, the show Passions, the TV show Queens of Drama. She's a great stage actress. She's a talent teacher, acting teacher, she's a coach. She's like out there, she's working it out. Um, and they were friends and, I'm, and I talked to her. And so I invited him on and she decided because it was actually Mark J. Freeman's birthday to do a little song for him. Here we go. Ready. Okay. Happy birthday huh? to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mark. Happy birthday to Happy birthday! Oh, so oh my God. I had no idea she could sing. I had no idea. I'm like, wow. And she is just a lovely, lovely person. Great woman, great actress. She is doing the hustle. You just, you need to, if you see her in anything, support her. She's so good. And a great friend to the show. Then I had one of my full circle moments. I get to do this show sometimes. I get to meet people that I've admired or liked or enjoyed over the years. Yes, I'm in my late 40s. I may not look it. Um, so I've been around a long time. And so there are some people that come across my desk, as this next performer and group did, that made me say yes. There was no thought process. What can we get them on? Um, there's an LA Music Soul Festival that happens here now in Los Angeles, and they were one of the headliners. Um, if you guys are not old enough, uh, this group was called Loose Ends, and they were big in the, in the 80s. 
uh, on, the, on the charts. They had songs like Slow Down, Hold On Wild, Hang On Wild Child, Mr. Bachelor, all these different songs, a bunch of hits. And they still perform today. They do a lot of stuff, and their voices were amazing. They sang several times in my episode, and it was like listening to angels sing. But I had them sing one song for me uh, towards the beginning of the show, and that's Miss Jane Eugene, who's sitting next to me, who's just a lovely person and warm spirit. And let's go ahead and show that. <laughs> you can stop the rain. That was beautiful. Okay. My ears yeah. Now, the male singer, Robert G., is going to be on my show solo September 20th. So this month, he's going to be on my show solo. We're going to talk about his musical career. He has an album out and all kinds of stuff. He's a great guy. And he's around the country touring and doing stuff, and he does stuff with them. And it was just so wonderful. Now, the funny thing about Full Circle, there's a song by them called Mr. Bachelor that I still play to this day. I still play it. I still, it's in my iPad and everything. I got it, and it was so weird. I got a chance to actually sing, not really seriously, but kind of sing a piece of it to them. It was a very surreal moment. Let's go there. What am I supposed to do? Hey, hey. And I can't slow down, no, 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 no. Or keep my feet on shaky ground. Slow down. Oh, one of the songs they sing. Cause I can't take the heat. Slow down. Ooh, slow down, baby. Slow down. Cause I can't take the heat. Slow down. I wanna know. Hey, if it's this the part, to take my heart to wipe your feet off. Is this the part? Is this the part you take my heart to wipe your feet off? Oh. Is this the part? Don't wipe your feet on me. If you won't get money, uh -huh. when I've been missing, uh -huh. what someone else will have to do. Then I guess that's how it's gotta be, baby. Hey. You for you and me for me. Come on. Slow hey. down. Slow down, y'all. Cause Ooh. I can't take So apparently I didn't sit at the right spot, but there's a part where I actually sing part of the Summer Bachelor to him. I guess I didn't sit up the right way. But uh, you can actually see that. I'll just make you go to that interview and you can actually see me actually sing the song to them. It's like it's like two seconds, like three seconds of me singing back to me. And that's just a full circle moment for me. So it's, it's, you can go watch the episode. It's really good. The whole episode's really good. She actually talks about Boy George, you know, the advice that he gave her back in the 80s. Some good advice and stuff. So um, that was it. Was some really good stuff there. They're a great, they're a great band, and they're just and they just you hear they all sound so good together. They sound so good together. So maybe next maybe next show I'll find that clip and I'll actually put it up so you guys can actually see them. 
Okay. Uh, now we do have some unexpected touching moments. And for me, um, I'm going to show you a couple of this episode. Uh, we do get real in here sometimes, and I'm able to sometimes draw out um, information from guests that they don't usually talk about or they usually don't bring up, but they feel comfortable to because I try to make it a safe space here for people. I want them to feel that they can come here and talk about anything they want to and how they feel. And, uh, and it can come from anything. And that's what's really interesting about this. It could come from something completely benign to something very serious where the moment will come. And the first moment is uh, one um, from Miko Branch. She is the CEO and one of the founders of Miss Jessie's Hair Care Products. And we had a great conversation. I mean, it's people, for a lot of people, it's one of their favorite shows is with her. And she is a beautiful spirit. Her sister Tiki had died a year earlier, almost a year earlier to us talking. And I'll give you a little behind the scenes. I was a little nervous because um, I wasn't sure how to navigate that because they started the company together. And that's her sister. And I'll tell you something. Now that I watched the interview um, the other night when I was putting this show together, I just lost my brother Max. And so I get it now. I totally, I completely get her strength and how hard it is to continue. And they were business partners at the same time. And so, but I now get what it's like to lose a sibling. So it's very, um, it was very tough for me to watch the interview a little bit. But it's just, this is a moment that was really kind of cute towards the end about her sister. Let's go ahead and watch. Can you give a shout out? Please do. And talk to that camera over there. I want to give a shout out to my sister, Titi Branch. She was such a wonderful woman. She was my big sister. She was my everything. Uh, we're approaching her one year mark uh, yeah. for her passing. And um, I, I'm, she's in my heart right now. And um, I just love her. And I just want to give a shout out to you, Titi. I love you. I feel her. She's here. I feel her too. No, I mean, seriously, I feel her. I feel her too. Mm -hmm. She protects me so much yeah. and uh, she, she tries to make things as smooth as possible. Yeah, she's here. Yeah, I know. She kind of tapped me a second ago. She was like, okay. I'm like, okay. Yeah, she I'll like, and, sh and she likes you. She would have, she would have loved you. Aww. Yeah. Hi, Titi. Hey, Titi. And so, so that um, was just a, a, one of the, one of the moments like there. And, again. and Miko has been a great person to me since. Um, she did, she did a great thing and sent me some hair care products for my, the women in my life. And they enjoyed those. Um, the products are really good. Miss, Miss Jessie's hair care products, you haven't heard, heard about them. They're really good. And she's a great lady who um, raises her son and has a business and goes around the country and passes on the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial spirit. I just admire, admire her so very much. Um, and I got through that interview. And what it taught me was that just stay present in every interview. Don't get nervous, just stay present. And let them dictate kind of where it goes sometimes. It's okay to you know, kind of sit back and just ask certain questions. And if it's a good interview, Things like that will happen, and it will come up. So that's kind of something that I, I learned on that one. I learn, when I do this show, I learn stuff all the time when I do this show. Um, the next one, of course, is my buddy, Joe Hernandez-Kolsky. He is a brilliant activist, actor, rapper, educator. He is so, and him and, and Joshua Silverstein are also partners. They do stuff together and separate. Um, they do stage uh, plays together. I, I watched their show recently, did a, a duo show together. It was so good. Um, but they're, they're, two, they're two really good friends who have a similar way of way to express themselves, and it just totally works. Solo, he is wonderful, brilliant. And we started talking about just his upbringing, um, and we started talking about education, and this moment came up that was very unexpected. Let's go ahead and see that education do you think what I mean what does education mean to you I think I don't think when it comes to college because people are always like you know people are still impressed by Princeton and I take great pride in it 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 it, it whew, I'm about to give a Clint like I worked hard I'm sure <sighs> somebody recently said to me um she was kind of like belittling me saying like you've never had it hard and um, and she came from like you know a background in, in drugs and alcohol and yeah. as a kid, and I was like, that's easy. Mm -hmm. Hard is doing the right thing, and it's you know, hard is the work, mm -hmm. you know. And we talk about it in you know, life is hard, but um, 
So yeah, so hmm. So getting getting to Princeton was a big deal to me, but what I do love is I love higher education regardless of what it is. I think the choice to say um I have a lot more to learn is a critical piece. I mean, I went to I went to the school at Steppenwolf when I was what 40, 41. Yeah. I just did yeah. it last year. Yeah. And that's I, I I think that's what life is about, you know. I always tell people, um, it's not the Pain Olympics. Um, everyone has different what it's everything's relative to people. Yeah. What Absolutely. they do. And to get into Princeton is no small feat. You should mm -hmm. feel very proud of that. Yeah. And that you were there for a while, you should be very proud of that also. Yeah. And I think it's something that when people say things, well, I did this and I was this, I mean, it doesn't matter. Your stuff's good too. Correct. Well, everybody has their thing. Yeah, absolutely. And I, de I definitely never try, I, I hope it doesn't come across like I've worked harder than others. No, no, no. Um, because I think everyone has their thing. But it was really interesting. I was thrown by, you know, there's still this association of the, you know, uh, uh, growing up hard, being very specific imagery. Yes. Yes. And I, I'm not saying like, I, yeah, I've had some wonderful support that yeah. I don't take. So that's just a great interview we had, and he got a little um, clamped, of course, I, I mean, uh, talking about education and succeeding, going to an Ivy League school. So that's something that was uh, really we joked about it later when I have on a show later on. But I really that makes me teary eyed just watching it again. I just think that uh, we work really hard. And you come from backgrounds that aren't considered the norm, and you get to places that are really well known and and high up there. It is. It can almost bring you to tears sometimes. And I just, I just appreciate that. I appreciate that he was so open on my show. I was, and he was very present in my show. And I, a lot of my guests, I, I thank many of them for that because they just come on my little little show here, uh, Black Hollywood Live, and they sit down, they expose themselves, and talk about how they feel. And that's the reason why this was, this show was all about for me. So that makes me very happy. Um, the last clip I'm going to show is just a clip. This is my buddy. He's been on a couple of times now. He is someone who I share a birthday with. <laughs> kind of funny. And he is just one of the best guys I know. He's become my friend now, which is just, like, amazing to me. He's one of the original lockers. I mean, this is a guy who created and helped co-create a whole new style of dance. How many folks can actually say that? Not many. Between him, Tony Basil, Fred Rumberry, and others, they were the hit of the 70s. And then, of course, he did break-in movies, and he was a hit in the 80s. I mean, he's been around. He did the Madonna tour in 87. Like, he's been around for a long time. He is out there just he's out there teaching and coaching and he just won a lifetime achievement award hip hop hip hop award it's just a, he's an amazing guy and he looks amazing at 61 like i wouldn't even guess it at all and he's just he's just really my buddy adolfo Shabadu Quinones is his name you probably have seen him in the Shaq Khan video if i feel for you and things like that but um this is the full this is why i do this show sometimes i get to meet people that i've admired for like 30 40 years and this is kind of the beginning of the show that we did My guest, I'm trying not to fan out too much because I've been a fan of his for a long time. He was one of the original lockers. And now, if you don't know who they are, we're going to show some stuff from them. But those of you who do remember, yes, we were, Fred Rumberry was in there, Tony Basil was in there. I mean, they started the whole pop lock thing, which I never caught on. I tried to do it, and I just didn't, didn't work for me. I was still dancing the hustle or something. Um, he also, you may know, see, may know him from the Breakin' movies, Breakin' and Breakin' 2. He's also in Shaq Khan's video for I Feel For You. He's also part of Madonna's tour in 1987 for Who's That Girl, which I first saw you there live with the moving walkway thing you were dancing on. I was like, how do you guys not fall on that? Also did Jimmy Kitty's uh, uh, MTV sitcom and choreographed at the Oscars for 3-6 Mafia, who actually won that year, the Oscar where it's hard out there for a pimp. I mean, he's doing all kinds of things great guy and fellow Torian as myself, Shabadu. Glad to be here. Welcome. Well, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. You, know, you have a great name, Adolfo Quinones. We love that name, but you're Shabadu. That's, we, that's how we know you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sh Shabadu is my moniker, uh, but uh, again, I was born uh, or named by my parents, Adolfo, yes. Adolfo. Gutierrez Ooh. Quinones. I love it. 
You know. Sounds delicious. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a dessert. It does. It sounds yeah. good. Well, it's like, it sounds good. So, yes. Seriously, I reached out to him, and he said yes. Thank you so much. Oh, well, thank you. I live, in, I live in gratitude because I get to do this show. I get to meet some people that I really admire, and I felt like you have a story. Well, thank you. Thank you. So, thank you. I, I You know, when you offered uh, the show... I, I look at your picture, and I've always been a gut instinct person. And I just looked at you; it seems like such a nice person. Oh, thank you. Really, I because I wasn't familiar with the show, mm -hmm. but again, it's it was your face and the and just the energy oh, I got wow. from you. And I you. said, you know, this is a good show to do. This is a good guy. Uh, so that that says a lot about you as a as a spirit, as a person. Well, thank you. So uh, I appreciate that. Congratulations on this show. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I that was like, a, to get a compliment from him like that, I just could have like, okay, show's over. Thank you. I, I, my life is lived now. Um, so full circle moments like that are just great. And he is just one of the, just, again, best people on earth out there. Um, he's great. And uh, hope to have him on again for a third or fourth time. He has so much to talk about. We just I just had him on last week, and he was... We showed clips. He's done so much, and it's just been amazing. I just I love him to death. Um, great guy. Um, so those are our clips that we decided to show. Now, um, one of the things that I do on this show is at the end of every episode, I ask the guests two questions. <laughs> you guys always laugh at me. But, oh, before I get to that part, just one clarification I want to make because someone mentioned online a while back when I was on my phone during loose ends talk is singing the song i was actually snapchatting them singing it i was singing it to my snapchat fans so you, you see me looking down i was appreciating the song of course but i was snapchatting the kind of pieces of the song so the fans could actually see that separately so that's i was going to clear that up but yes back to my two questions i started this in my radio show the super organized universe radio show uh last year where i wanted to find something very unique that would be a through line throughout my show because I believe in language. I believe in language so much that I think language can uh, divide us, language can bring us together, language can separate us, language can pull us forward, hold us back. I'm a, just a big fan of language and words and being a wordsmith. So I always ask uh, guests, on, I did it on that show and I do it now, I'm, I'm breaking into, and one day I'm going to do a montage of all everybody's answers. I think I'm going to do this one day. That's what I think. Um, but... I don't ask, I don't tell them in advance, unless they watch the show and know that's what's going to happen, but I don't tell them in advance, and I ask them at the end of the interview two questions. One is, uh, what word do you think we should take out of the English language? And the second one is, what word should we bring back or say more of an English language? The taking out is always, it seems like the easiest one. People are just like, don't take out, take out this word, take out this word. But what we should say more about usually requires more thought. It's very interesting. So I am going to actually do it too. I'm going to, I'm going to find, everybody's going to ask me what are my two words, and I'm going to say them. Now, you might say, well, James, you invented this thing, so it must be easy. It was hard. Oh, my God, it's so hard because I've heard all the answers. <laughs> I don't really repeat any of the answers. So I'm like, uh, okay. Um, but this is so, oh my God, it was, it was so hard, but I do have two words. And, um, and the first word, what word do we think you should take out of our vocabulary? It just bugs me because I'm not, I'm not really in, I mean, maybe I'm old, but the word lit, this is lit. That's lit. I'm just, I'm so over already. I didn't like fleek. I didn't like lit. I didn't like, there's, there's certain words was like, oh my God, I'm an old person. I didn't care for it at all. So I think lit should be taken out. Now, what word I think you should bring into our vocabulary say more of is unconditional. That's my word. Unconditional. I feel like if someone's in your life and you're loyal to each other and you care about each other or, and or love each other, everything should be unconditional. I mean, not saying you should get away with things and just like let everybody do whatever they want, but you should still always love them or care about them unconditionally but try to work out whatever's going on. Because everybody has issues and problems and things happen, you know, of course. And I think it's just, it, it, people throw friendships and relationships away so easily that I think that the ones that are not even, they're not even toxic, I'm not talking about toxic ones or things that are horrible, but it's about just regular friendships that they say one thing and you're like, okay, I'm done. I don't want to work on it. But I feel like if you're, if you love, like you, like you love your children, you love your parents, but it, there should be an underlining thought of just unconditionalness out there, just, just something unconditional. Just be out there. And, I, and I, I like the word. And I have some friends in my life, people in my life, that treat me with unconditional love and support. And I think that's a great thing. You should say that a lot more. 
So that was our first edition of um, Breaking Into You's Greatest Hits Volume 1. Volume 2 will be on October 4th, same time period, 5 p.m. here on Black Hollywood Live. I'll do probably 11 more clips of some great stuff uh, and, uh, and catch up with that. And then on November 8th, is our one year anniversary and i'm planning something big it'll be here on black hollywood live again and it's going to be i'm gonna have i think five guests four or five guests come in studio live and uh, we have a good time you guys have a good time with us and have some drinks and you know what's going on and celebrate the year of being on this wonderful network i want to thank uh daryl christian jesse jennedy tiana hobson courtney stewart all the folks at Black Hollywood Live that just, you know, support me and 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 this show very much. And all you fans out there who tune in and watch and comment, I appreciate that also. To all the PR people who uh, help me get the guests and, and help promote this show, it means the world to me. To all the engineers, including Steven, who's in there right now. Uh, Steven's in there right now, who's the engineering. You guys are, are great. And you guys out there, thank you so much. And I will see you for a regular show next Tuesday. Thank you. From producers Maria Menounos, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire BHL crew, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I'm your BHL announcer, Scipio. Instagram me at Planet Scipio. Thank you for tuning in. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.